Hey guys, welcome back to this race survival series. We are nearing the end. JYJ winning the last game for Terran. And the last non-Terran player left alive right now is Sins. Uh, so we're going to see if Sins can maybe kill both JYJ and Ample and take it home for Team Protoss. It is a possibility. He's he's actually a very good PvT player, in my opinion. And it is Eclipse for this map. So, you know, Protoss has a lot of options on how to play Eclipse. Immediately sending his probe across. We'll see. I think, I mean, very likely a proxy gate based on the time that he sent it. Uh, likely an offensive gas as well. And we'll see how JYJ can respond to that. Obviously, if you play, like, a lot on the ladder and everything, Eclipse has been around for a long time. This uh, stuff is so common that Terrans have become pretty good at defending it. But I think if you do it well as Protoss, you definitely do gain an advantage. So let's see. Does he go one gate? Does he go two gate? You would imagine it's one gate. Like, proxy two gate is a... More of a B rank move than a pro gamer move. And here comes down that gateway on nine. Oh my god, it's gonna be two gate. Okay, well, I mean, this is something that can just kill people. Uh, looking at the Sim City here for JOJ, not perfect. Uh, the best Sim City you can do on this position is uh, first depot here, barracks here, second depot here, and that makes. There's a micro hole, a micro hole, and a micro hole where Marines can go through, but Zalts cannot. And then I personally think you put a depot back here. So you just have this line where they can only get through the mineral line, and then you can drill to mess them up. But getting the gas now as well. Going for a little bit of a scout. The proxy two gate against someone who's taken a gas. If you miss micro at all as JYJ, you can die. Now, the probe actually goes home. That is interesting. I'm very surprised. Normally, you use the probe for some added pressure. Also, there is the follow-up of a cannon rush to a proxy two gate. Uh, you know, a lot of times, they don't have enough Marines. Like, if you have five or six Zealots just standing here, and then you have all the Marines that you've made off of one rack standing here, there's no way to go out and actually kill them off and get rid of cannons. So, uh, that has become something that's somewhat popular and somewhat common. But either way... Gas on the way. He wants that extra economy at home. And the first Zealot is here. The Sim City is not looking very good to protect this factory. This factory is so far out there. Very little scouting going on from JYJ. Maybe a little bit greedy on his side. The second Zealot coming in so quick, quickly is going to tell him it is a proxy two gate. The one's Marine has no chance here. And the factory, I don't think it can even finish. Like... I mean, look, you got to pull so many SCVs, but you're not beating three Zots with this. Okay, puts one on that SCV as it's building the factory. Oh, gets on top of one of the Marines here. Good micro on these SCVs, but the factory still has about 20 seconds of build time left. Starts a bunker. Maybe to bunker push to his own factory. This is looking absolutely terrible right now. It Sins has basically won this game. This is too much damage. And, I mean, there's two Dragoons on the way. Yeah, no, that's that's it. With two Dragoons on the way, you absolutely cannot hold this. The Zoths themselves winning this game. The Dragoons, when they get up here, you're going to see a GG. Okay, GG before. On to the next game. All right, so, uh, yeah, game eight. This is it to decide which race wins. Race Survival Series week number seven. We have Sins in the top left and Ample in the bottom right. Well, uh, it's nice to see some, like, B-ish level dirt being used by Sins to kill a pro gamer. Because, honestly, uh, <laughs> there are builds that we see pro Terrans do on Eclipse where you look at it and you're like, yeah, that wouldn't win many games at lower levels <laughs> because everyone's so dirty on the map. But a lot of pro Protosses do much more retracted builds. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I gotta tell you, I think I think that was a, a good move from Sins, and he picks up like the easiest victory he's probably ever had at the pro level. And uh, here we go, going up against Ample now on uh, Fighting Spirit. So cross spawn Fighting Spirit, okay, that kind of makes it interesting. Um, I definitely like cross spawn a bit more than close spawn. Close spawn, you can have some really weird stuff occur, uh, especially if you're near the Terran's third base as Protoss. 
Uh, we've definitely seen some some issues arise from that. So Sins goes ahead, throws his pylon down on the high ground, puts this forward gate down to be able to rally up some Zalt. It's kind of an interesting placement. Rather than up here, he has it back here. Uh, but what that will do is when the Nexus is here, it makes a tighter choke that you're going to be able to block. So he's not going to need necessarily a pylon wall here where he can use, like, I believe one Dragoon will block Vultures right there. And then you only have this area that's very clogged. Uh, he does go cross-spawn scout and will find ample immediately. So congrats on that. Sin's already off to a pretty good start, I would say. You know, if you get there first, that is really annoying for Terran. Having to pull an SCV to chase a probe uh, does slow everything down quite a bit. Second depot gets started right away. Dude, this second depot <laughs> is actually really quick. Um, he So this is basically him saying, oh, there's a possibility that we are going to have a, a, a proxy zealot rush once again, right? Like, obviously, they're watching the games while they're occurring. You saw what happened to his Terran bro. Uh, and, well, he, he just kind of, like, hedges against it, right, by making the quicker depot. Uh, either way... Yeah, pylon going up, so he's going to go ahead and finish with the third depot there, which obviously you don't want yet, and that slows the factory. So the factory, even with the probe coming into harass, could have been started at like 231, 232. He had the money. But then all this micro and starting this, because of, you know, the fact that Sin's already zealot rushed and Ample is like trying to counter that, his factory's like 20 seconds later than it could have been. So... Kind of an annoying start here for Ample. It's not the end of the world, but it's not what you wanted either. So he's sitting here behind a wall with a single Marine and a late factory. And we'll see if he's going to make more Marines because if you bring up your Zots and Dragoon and you do some harass here, it's so long until you get a siege tank, right? Like you got to finish the factory, 25 seconds for that on 32 seconds for the siege tank. And the Dragoon can keep putting damage on SCVs that are repairing on this single Marine. And the Zalots can deal a lot of damage to the depots. I want to see him just walk up the ramp and start to punish. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see here. Wow, I tell you. Hey, there's there's a lot about building image. It's almost like poker, right? <laughs> he's, he's, he's built this sort of image from that last game. He got Ample to play a little bit more defensively. And suddenly, this is what it looks like. He's going to be able to force that Marine back. The Marine can't come back anymore. He's going to be able to... Like, look at this. This is a lot of lost mining everything. He doesn't care about the Zealot health. It really... It literally doesn't even matter. Down goes the Marine. Now the Marine does get started. And, like, you're not going to break the wall. It is not, like, hard to keep the wall alive. But it's very annoying. He's losing mining time. He's repairing. Uh, it, it's possible you end up losing an SCV if things got frantic with the second goon, but you see he's like, he's repairing well. And obviously, you know, this is, this is not how you wanted it to go down. Now the siege tank is out, so the harassment is over. But, yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely annoying. One thing to mention, uh, probes were cut on this side. Okay, so we're actually up four workers on Ample's side, which is actually, that's rather surprising. Like, obviously, he did not lose any SCVs in this defense. Uh, but I did not expect him to be up, like, three to four workers at this point. That doesn't seem, like, um, too normal for the situation. But with how quick the Nexus is, uh, we should see Sins catch up, actually, rather quickly, I guess. If Ample cuts anything else, like, to get more factories up more quickly or something like that. I guess he actually, yeah, he lands the command center before the Nexus finishes. So, yeah, you know what? It all works out uh, for Ample there. Now, this is actually kind of a cool wall for Fighting Spirit. This is actually tight against everything Protoss. So, this will really slow down any incoming attacks. This will buy him extra time. Look, he's made a little wall here as well. So, he can just throw a turret probably right there. We'll see. He doesn't have a lot of intel. So, I think he should be making a missile turret rather quickly. Uh, I guess the last thing he saw was he was in the main base. He didn't see the Robo. So it could be like a DT follow-up. I would like to see him throw those uh, turrets down. So two factories are up for Ample. 
Laying a few mines. Ah, uh, okay, that's what his plan was. So he went directly into mines afterwards and is just laying some mines down to help deal with possible incoming DTs. Obviously, if your opponent's going to go DTs, he is going to send the Zealots first. Yeah, some nice micro on both sides. The Dragoons rotating over to catch the Vultures so they can't get out. Yeah, very annoying. Going to end up losing a Vulture right there. In fact, might lose a second one. Oh! Oh my god, one health. <laughs> exactly. And Vulture Speed is on the way. So I think Ample is going to look to mix things up. Like... Uh, run his vultures around, see if he can find some damage. I don't think he'll be able to, right? So we have, like, this little small choke. He's starting to build some more buildings here as well. The third base is starting to go up. Pylon wall incoming. And it is two-gate Dragoon that he's just kind of sitting here producing on, as well as observers. So, yeah, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to find any damage here, as ample. But I always like when a Terran player gets that speed upgrade relatively early on. Like, he's got all three upgrades for tanks and, and vultures, right? He's got speed mines and siege. Obviously, he had to have the siege to expand. Uh, the mines were kind of a cool add as the anti-DT, so he didn't have to overmake turrets. Um, and now he's got the speed. So this gives him, like, potential to do something. He's Look at this. He's run out. He's laid some mines, so you can't just walk out. And now he's going up towards 12 o'clock. There's a couple goons on the ramp that'll slow him down slightly... But honestly, when you look at this army, and it's getting a little bit out of position, I could see him possibly getting rid of this Nexus. He might be able to kill that. He's going to be able to siege here. Oh, the two goons on the high ground doing a great job here. They're going to be able to kill one of the tanks. I don't think he was expecting two goons to be there. And now the rest of the army comes in. Oh, my God. What, what looked like it might be a tactical opportunity here for Ample turned into a rout, and he is in so much trouble now. Now he has lost all of his early siege tanks. 20 supply advantage for Sins. Okay, well, this game, if Terran's going to win it, has to go long. He starts a third command center on location, which I like because he has to start taking a few risks here. Uh, that situation truly was so bad, guys. Some good mine hits as he drags uh, the goons over as they chase down that slow siege tank. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely going to have to add another add-on. He's going to have to turtle like mad. But he's still producing a lot of vultures. So maybe his idea here is to find some counter damage on harassment. Yeah, he'll, he'll get a little bit, I guess. A few probes are going to go down. Not too bad. Not too bad. But I do get worried about army sizes right now. Right? So I right now, Sin's can do basically anything he wants because there's literally 0% chance that he dies. After you kill that many early siege tanks, like, Sins could literally make two Nexuses and, like, two Forges right now. And, like, Ample wouldn't have an opportunity to kill him, right? He's getting a third base. He's on three factories only. He has two siege tanks, right? Two siege tanks in no universe beats... You know, right now, 14 goons and obviously 16 goons and more to come. Ah, uh, two Stargate. Okay, so we're actually going to have a carrier switch here from Sins. Which, yeah, I think I think that this is a totally fine play from him. Uh, because normally you want to hit a timing attack as Terran against carriers. They just scale up so well. And they're they're quite good on fighting spirit also. I think, I think Arbiters are a little bit better here, but... Uh, yeah, Carrier's definitely, definitely usable. But like we were talking about, right? It, Ample, it doesn't feel like he's going to reach the critical mass for an attack to kill Sins before he gets, like, four Carriers out. And, in fact, he's going three Stargates. So, yeah, he's going to be going three Carriers at a time. Uh, and that's what we're going to have to keep an eye on, right? So the numbers are going to be three and then six as long as he's actually producing out of all three, which you would imagine he's going to. Uh, and at six carriers, that's when it starts to get kind of crazy. Like, you you need to start thinking about having 16 plus, 20 plus skulls at that point. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, I, I guess we just wait and see if Ample is up to the task. It's a tough position, but Ample is actually a very good Terran vs. Protoss player. I've watched a lot of his Terran vs. Protoss games, and... He's generally pretty aggressive, and you've already seen that here, but the aggression has not worked, unfortunately. 
See that supply starting to go up a bit for Sins. Of course, he's only on those four gateways and not even really producing out of them because he is during, in the middle of the carrier transition. And the transition into carriers, it's its kind of, in this matchup, the only real transition Protoss has because all the other compositions are just like gateway units being made all the time and then little bits of tech added in. Whereas when you go into carriers, this is a weak point. Like normally in a game that didn't open like this, we would see uh, an attack being prepared right now to try to get across the map. But unfortunately, losing all those units early on, this has become a very tough situation for Ample to, to plan any sort of attack. Like, I mean, he's macroing very well. We we definitely can say that. He's got a lot of units considering, um, you know, the siege tank count. Let's take a look. So he's got eight, nine siege tanks total. This one, I don't think this one will probably move at all. But that's, you know, he doesn't quite have what he's looking for here for an attack. Now Sin's coming over, getting ready to take another base. The first three carriers are about to pop out, which means suddenly you need to have a lot of Goliaths in your army too. And he is adding them in. So already six Goliaths. More carriers being produced immediately. So three more. Six is actually where they start to get very, very scary. Uh, two are not very useful. Four are good. And then six is where you're like, oh my God. <laughs> okay. So Sins, I, I, I love the way Sins is playing it, where he's just kind of clearing mines so he has quick army movement. Because what he needs to do is not engage this. You know, he's still in the transition. Three carriers are not that scary. Also, no legs yet. Kind of late on Zealot legs. Very Dragoon heavy. And obviously, we don't have Psy Storm started. Psy Storm is kind of the last piece to the carrier puzzle that you want to add in. More and more Goliaths coming out. Is Ample going to be able to make something happen? That is a big Protoss army. Maxed out now is Sins. Still making those interceptors. Still waiting for three carriers. So, again, this is not the strongest army. And of course, as Terran closes to Max, they can definitely fight against this. You're not really afraid of the Zealots and Dragoons, right? It's it's the carriers that you're a bit more afraid of. And obviously, Goliaths are not as good against ground as the other units. But here we go. Siege is up. A huge battle is taking place right now. The Goliaths coming forward a little bit. Does have a single vessel in here. No energy for a defense matrix as of yet. The Vulture's almost gone at this point. No Zealot legs. So the Zealots are getting eaten up pretty darn quickly. And the Dragoon arc may just be enough. The Sea Chain count never really hitting that mass that you're looking for. And very unfortunate engagement in a lot of ways. Like, a lot of the Gateway Army does go down, but only one Siege Tank remains. And in fact, he's just going to continue to fight, because why not? Uh, it looks like his Interceptors, though, are mostly eaten up, so obviously, like, three Hurt Dragoons do not beat this. Starting to pull back now. Three more carries are out, three more on the way. Comes up to this high ground. And he has to be careful. This is the moment where Ample is really trying to get that damage done. He does not have a very good army right now, but Sins needs time to get his Interceptors back to actually fight this. Also get a few rounds of those units out. More Goliaths and tanks coming over. Sins right now has to be feeling a little bit hunted. His carrier is going to fly away. He may end up giving up this base and just massing up. Uh, because his carrier count is going to be very, very scary. He's almost to nine. And like I mentioned, at six, they start to get scary. If you have interceptors, which he doesn't quite yet. He's still working on that. Uh, but when you get into nine, it's like, okay, Terran really needs two full groups of Goliaths at this point. All right, they're coming back now. Down goes... Uh, oh, very nice D-Matrix on that four Goliath. Uh, down goes... The uh, Nexus. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word Nexus there for a moment. Ample does set up a fourth base behind this. But now we have speed lots on the field. Now we have a lot of gateway units coming. It's actually only six gates. So the gateway army is not all that big. I love the mines that are being laid. Ample is doing a good job of kind of controlling a lot of the movement here. And the fact that he killed the fourth base is so important. If the fourth is up... That's where you're going to see suddenly Sins gets into Storm and adds more gates and everything starts to really go for him. 
We have eight, nine carriers out. That is a lot of damage output. Plus two attack on those interceptors already. Ample coming forward with these Goliaths. He does have plus two attack. Almost plus two armor done, but uh, no plus three attack, unfortunately. Definitely very useful. Not that many Seed Shanks. Has some Vultures in here as well. The Zealot's going to start to get on top of everything. Starting to target down the Seed Shanks here with those carriers. And as the Seed Shanks fall, the ground army becomes more and more valuable here for Sins. Oh, only one tank remains. Once again, the same type of situation as the last battle. The Interceptors are getting shot up quite a bit, so he chooses to walk back. Obviously, the 0-0 goons against 2-2 Goliath tank are going to have a little bit of a harder time. You definitely need your carriers putting in their damage as well. You know, just straight gateway units don't do much for Protoss after the early game. Uh, you really need spellcasters in there, whether it's Arbiters or High Templars, or, of course, carriers that can shoot with Interceptors. All right, another base going up for Ample. I got to say, Ample is putting out a really nice game. After losing those early Sea Chinks, I was worried about him, but Sins kind of gave him some time to get his stuff together by going into carriers. You know, he went into his own transition there. So... Suddenly, we're looking at this, and this is a lot of Goliaths to fight against. We still don't have a Templar Archives. Just something to point out here. So, unable to get into Storm, which is so important. You kind of treat the Goliaths as if they are Hydras in a, in a PVZ, right? Like, they all get clumped up to fight the carriers, so you can put a ton of damage out with those Storms. Dragoon coming around the side, kind of scouting what's going on. He's going to know now that there are two bases taken down here. Look at this. He's just adding more command centers. Has a vulture up at that top right as well. I actually am starting to look at this. I think Ample is going to end up winning this game. He's done such a good job, but the carrier count is really frightening. So we're going to see what they can get done. Because, like, look, they're going to this high ground. This is dead. And the Goliaths have to really commit here. To push the carriers back or this base dies too so he's coming up that is a lot of interceptors right now 10 carriers just going to town and look at this abusing the mobility of uh the terrain here carries of course with vastly superior mobility Goliath's coming back around though a bit more firepower at the moment little dragoon counterattack over at the side preventing an additional base it might be time for Ample to try to push. Like, Sins, I guess they could go into, like, some sort of weird base trade, but I think Ample has has what he needs to push through this. Without splash damage, these gateway units just are not doing very much. All right, comes forward right now and starts to engage a little bit on those Dragoons. Sins backing up. Okay, I think he is going to go for a base trade here. We see a pretty full push into the fourth base. But, yeah. Okay, he's going towards the rally point right now. Carriers and goons can easily wreck what's here. But I do think Ample will just come home to fight that army. But sometimes you see the carriers make some magical moves. Like, fly into the main base, pick off the armories. And suddenly, where are you at? We have Sidestorm just now getting started. Here comes that reinforcement of the Goliaths. Siege tanks should be coming pretty soon as well. And look at this. Every unit being picked off in a matter of seconds. Defense Matrix going down on a couple of Goliaths. But the carriers getting into the main base. We'll see what he ends up picking off. Decides to go after the Goliaths right now. Picking off everything he can. Of course, Goliath's coming over this bridge against this many Dragoons and Carriers. Don't have much of a shot. He does have units rallying out of the factories. A couple tanks sieging up there. Trying to add a bunch of their value hits to those Dragoons. 11 Carriers right now showing what they are worth. The Dragoon count getting lower and lower. Oh, a few Dragoons were split off to the side here at the third. Carrier's going to do a little flyby here and kill off that command center. Not much way to save that, unfortunately, with the damage output of these carriers. Carriers, of course, with the, one of the highest two DPS in the game alongside Stim Marines. 
is putting out some insane damage here. And, like, <laughs> this is a wild game. You see Ample's supply has really plummeted. He lost his command center on this side. He's lost this command center as well. Barely any mineral patches. Refloating up to here. So I guess he can get one more base. But he is way down in army supply in kind of everything right now. Carriers flying back home for the defense. Oh, Psy Storm's starting to go off. You know what, guys? Protoss may not have had the best run through here, but at the end of the day, I think they are going to be the only ones left over since taking down the last couple Terran players. Uh, very, very impressive stuff. Really, I mean, the it was interesting to see the carrier choice once he held. Like, I guess he knew he could not die to a timing attack, and, and that was enough for him to pull the trigger there on the three Stargate carrier. Uh, but Ample... Yeah, I mean, with this base up and mining, that is it. GG Protoss wins week seven.